Amen. Bless the Lord. We thank God to you for all of you that are here on this happy Father's Day. So as a pastor of the church, I want to welcome each one of you and I trust that your stay will be a blessed one. Above all, we wish every father a blessed Father's Day. And may this day be full of joy and splendor for you. And I think we need to give ourselves a big hand, all of us, that we'll join together on Father's Day. Amen. This is a first. Amen. We're a church, temple, or ashram, mosque, every one of us come together in one accord. We are all one in, in the body of Christ. We are all brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. You hear me? We're brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters. So we thank God today that we can be found in His presence. I got a short word. I'm not going to be long. I want to give the guests more of a chance to uh, entertain us. <laughs> right? But uh, when we, we, we come together on Father's Day to rejoice with the fathers. We always put emphasis on Mother's Day. For some reason, every religion, we put more emphasis on Mother's Day and we forget about Father's Day. So we want to say to every, every father, this is your day. Amen. I said to every father, this is your day. You're not right, you're ladies. You are. <laughs> Guru, me and you will pray for all the ladies here. You are very touched today. Pray for all the ladies. Keep quiet. Yeah, keep quiet. No, keep quiet. Keep quiet. That's the most rebellious to you in the church room. Don't want to bite here. I'll show you later. I'm going to talk to you. Pray for her. Birdie tree, we pray for her. Come, let's pray for your birdie tree. Come, 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 pray. come, let's pray for you. Come. It's a birdie tree. She's 59 years old. Oh, 59. And my daughter is 27. Oh, okay, today a birthday too. Yes. Mother and daughter. Okay, praise the Lord. Let's pray for you. Father, we thank you today for your grace. We thank you Lord, for your joy and your peace. We thank you Lord, for your daughter. She celebrates her birthday today. Your blessing indeed, Lord, in every area of her life. Bless her, Lord, uh, and give her, Lord, that which her heart's desire. We pray the Lord, you meet with her and you will saturate her with the love of God, Jay. We thank you for her and we bless your name now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Happy birthday to you. Amen. Happy birthday. Bless you. Right. That's good. You stole the show for Father's Day. Never mind. Give a break. So today we're going to share Father's Day like never before. We're going to share with different uh, minds, uh, different hearts, uh, different uh, uh, bodies. We come from different areas, but we're celebrating together. Amen. Amen. And that's how every uh, uh, special day in our life should be shared with one another. We can't say it's a Christian holiday. We can't say it's uh, only for the Christians. We can't say it's only for us as children of God. It's for all of us together. Amen. The Hindus, the Christians, the Muslims, we must come together in one accord, one one this and we must share it together. Amen. Amen. I, I just want to share one quickly with you and, and then hand over to uh, Guru and his team and to come and share it together with Karo Charo. You can see he's all dressed up, all uh, swanky. You can bless that. Thumbs up. Buzz up, thumbs up. Uh, one thumbs up, say one thumbs up, that's it. It's fine. Right, so we thank God. We, we, we always want to celebrate special occasions in the church, which is good, nothing wrong with it. We always want to come together and enjoy ourselves and, and, and celebrate and, and go home and uh, spill a table for our dads, especially on Father's Day, Mums on Mother's Day. But do we ever, do we ever continue with a favor every single day of our lives? Like you heard Mum say earlier on, Father's Day is every day. You must honor your father every day. Not only your father's day. You must cook and, and spoil your father every single day. Mary, yes, you must spoil your father every day. Yes, I'll come and sit by your front door every day. Yes, Dad. No Amen. Father. Bless the Lord. <laughs> yes, Dad. Okay. <laughs> Guru, you must be able to celebrate Father's Day every day with your people. You are their father. Amen. You must have that oneness with them and they must celebrate Father's Day. They must come and give a meal every day. Don't laugh. I'm serious. You must cook and give the guru every day. And make sure you find out what he eats before you cook. The best of the veggies they must get and they must cook for you, guru. That's a child and the father relationship. 
And same with my people. How many food you cook every day from today? <laughs> when I have a competition, Guru and I see whose people take care of, good care of him, right? These people cook for him and you cook for me. Let's see. Who brings the best meal? Just eat the tonight. Right, good. And I eat meat, I don't invest in my Guru. Right. But we thank God we have the ability to come and share God's love one another. We must, we must honor our fathers every single day. Every day of our life must honor our father. We have only one father. And you know two fathers? But you say your spiritual father. One biological father. Everybody's got one? Yes. You know what? Anyone sharing fathers here? No? Come on, baby. We all have one father in our lifetime. And we must celebrate this father every day. You must give the best of your ability. Your father's, your father's, your father's heart's cry is that his child be blessed. And the child must also have the same heart cry as my father will be blessed. And every single day we bless one another. I'm reminded of the father in the Bible, and if, if you will go home later, you can read the story. His name is Father Abraham. Amen. He had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. But he took Isaac and he went to the mountain to sacrifice him. And God stopped him and said, No, Abraham, I don't want your son. Here's the ram caught in the ticket. Because God honors the relationship between a father and a child. He doesn't, God doesn't want you to just take your father away. How many believe God gave your father to take him away? Never. That's not God's will. God wants you to enjoy your father. And how do you enjoy your father? By blessing him. You enjoy your father by blessing him. Guruji is a father that's in the house. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe that we as the children of God, we need to bless him. Amen. Amen. I said we need to bless Guruji today. He's the father Amen. in the house. Amen. Right. He's the eldest father in our house today. Amen. You don't go to the Guruji, are you? I don't Guruji. No, okay, Guruji first, okay. Right? Can you hold it? Right? Just give it a minute, right? Okay. Right? Guruji is our father yesterday. And we must honor the man of God. We must give him his due benevolence. And say it like that at home when you go, you honor your father. You don't know when you will have your father next year. Life is so uncertain. People lose their lives daily. And we're not even sure when we will have our father next year. We're not even sure. But uh, when we have him, give him the best. Amen. Let your father have the best. How many of you are prepared? Children, fathers, give your father to you. Let's see. Come on, let me see. Are you a one? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah, we're all bad here. Nothing for the father. Mother, say, what do you give your mother? What do you prepare for your mother? Tell me. What do you got for your mother? Yeah. Chicken curry and rice, boy. Hey, you want to, you want to fly to you. And salad, don't forget the salad, must eat the salad, yeah, healthy. Uh, let's see who else, who else can I catch? Who else? Mm. No, what do you prove for your father, no? Pastor, no? What do you prove for your father? You, you prove, who prepared it? She prepared it, you prepared it. She prepared it, you didn't prepare anything, right? So what do you prepare for your father? Ah, you, you sit in the supper. You saw him for lunch and supper. You had lunch in the chair and you lunch at home and you supper. You blessed. Amen. Right, what did you plan for your father to be? Okay. 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 Nothing. What did you plan on Mother's Day for your mother? And don't you check it? What did you give your mother on Mother's Day? You give your mother breakfast to your father, nothing. No, you tell me that thing. Who else? Boy, what you give your father today? Nothing. Terrible children, you have a guru. You got terrible children. Give your father nothing. They think they came from the spoko tree. Not Sherwin. Really. Sherwin. Oh, right, Sherwin. <laughs> right, Sherwin. Put the camera on. Right? Put the camera on. Put the camera on. Everybody put the camera on. Sherwin, no? Sherwin, what do you give dad? Not that. What do you give dad? No, give him something. Yeah, what you gave him? <laughs> him Nothing. Okay, what you giving him? Later. Yeah, or give him later. He's thinking about it. But it's not working. No, he's actually trying to give you a diamond. He's got a chocolate. Not diamond. He's 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 not diam
give our fathers the best. You are, you are what you are today because your father who took care of you. Amen. How much more must you take care of your father now? Amen. Understand? You're right, Vanessa? What do you want from the prayer? Oh, oh. <laughs> see if you got last year getting this year. What you got last year, bro? What you got last year? One shirt. I'm going to another shirt coming this year. You collect the shirts and keep it going. Hey, collecting your shirts. You will prove what you receive. Let's get past the tree, guys. What you receive. Don't teach him. What you give him? Yeah, what you give him? What is he? He got his gift here, man. He got his gift right next to you. Hey. God bless the Lord. But what I'm saying. Father's Day must be a day of rejoicing just as good as Mother's Day is. Because without the mother, you won't be born. Without the father, you won't be made. Amen. Your father made you, your mother delivered you to this world. And both are as important as one is to the other. And we need to rejoice. So I pray this day be a blessed one for you. I pray this day that you'll be blessed. I pray that you, you enjoy your blessings. When you go home after having lunch with us today, Go and enjoy your father. Go and enjoy your father. Some of us don't have fathers. We thank God for our fathers that were here. And we don't have them now. But we thank God we, we still can celebrate with other fathers here today. Amen. So I want to wish every father a happy Father's Day. Trust your, your, your day be blessed, full of the glory of God. And may you have the newness of life shining on you every single day. Amen. Okay, I'm done now for today. I'm going to hand over to Kulu. Right, and then he's going to continue the program from here from Henspot. Thank you. Bless you. Jai Shri Manara. 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 I want to thank all of you once again for having given me the opportunity to address you. My name is Acharya Sham Ramanuj. I hail from the most ancient tradition in what you know as Hinduism that is called Sanatan Dharma. This tradition is flowing from the time of creation. The tradition that I hail from is flowing since creation and it's called the river of disciplic succession. I am spiritually connected to my Guru who is spiritually connected to his Guru and it goes back all the way back to the Supreme Lord. You have scientific evidence that this earth is a few billion years, they're talking about 14 billion. But from the scriptures that I follow, it is exactly 155 trillion years since this cycle of creation. There are two worlds, you know, the Bible also describes two worlds the material world and the spiritual world. The spiritual world is eternal. Yeah. It exists all the time. Yes. There cannot be time when we use the word eternal. Yes. The time does not exist in that atmosphere. Mm. This material universe has time. Mm. It lasts for a while, and if you look around, you will notice everything in this material world, it takes its birth, it lives for a while, it reproduces, then it dies. That is the cycle of this material universe in its entirety when you look at it as a whole. Which means that the Supreme Lord, whilst living eternally, 
with eternal souls, he creates temporary universes for a specific reason. So, according to our scriptures, it states that at first, the Lord was alone. Then he decided to become many. Lord was alone. Then he decided to become many. And we are this many that has taken living forms in this universe. The reason the Lord has become many is that the many can realize that they are one. Reason Lord has become many so that many can realize they are one. When the many realize you are one, then you go back to Godhead. Then you go back to Godhead. It is this Father who you call Lord Jesus, Jehovah, Jaira, we call Narayan. Our language, Sanskrit, Narayan means the source and goal of all living entities in English. Does it make sense to you? Should God be the source and goal of all living entities? That is why we say Narayan. Like you say Jesus. You say Jehovah. Alright? So, one Lord, many attributes, and we are one of the many attributes of the Supreme Lord that is the living entity. We are here to embrace you. If you look on social media and if you follow, we are all of one race, yes. Indian. Yes. Racially, God only made four divisions and those divisions He made in race. He made four divisions in humanity in accordance with race. Religion intertwines with every race. It does not matter what race you are. If you have a particular appetite, that religion should be your appetite. It should satiate you fully. So a father might have three sons. One would like chicken, one would like meat, and one would like vegetables. Are all his sons should be treated equally? Do they have a right to satiate their own appetite? Does the father have a right to differentiate between them because of their appetites? So this is what the Sri Narayan has started many years ago. It is fructifying today that we only have one father. Pastor heard me say, but I'd like to share this with your group, Pastor, uh, Pastor, because I'd like to see all of them in the ashram one day. And when they come to the ashram, they must know why they are coming to the ashram, not because the pastor said you must come. You must come to the ashram understanding what the ashram is about. We are clearing, and I thank Pastor for giving me this platform, we are clearing misconceptions about Hindus. Yes. And we are also clearing misconceptions about Christians. That's right, yeah. they, we're living on misconception. Today is a, if you go on social media, 98% of the news is fake news. Yeah. Right. And we are living in a world of perception and yeah. fake news. Yes. And we live 
And our first hatred comes from religion. Religion is fostering hatred. Everybody is about their own. The ashram is about their own. The mosque is about their own. The church is about their own. We want to break those barriers and say that you are our own. The Christian is my own. The Muslim is my own. Sanatan Dharma is my own. I belong to all. Today, today, I am Archbishop Acharya Sham Brahma. I superseded your pastor. I feel the consciousness of Lord Jesus Christ penetrating every cell in my body. And that is why I am here today. I am a no-nonsense guru Amen, yeah. and my own disciples will tell you I do not hesitate to conk you on your head. Amen. Amen. So I won't be making this statement if it is not it's true. true. You understand? Yes. And when pastor comes to the ashram, yeah. he must feel the consciousness of the ashram yes. permeating is living being because there is only one truth, one God, different appetites. Think of the different roots as appetites. So at inception it was the duty of those that fell into Christianity 2,000 years ago, it was a duty of Christians to convert. It was a natural duty of the Christians to convert 2,000 years ago. Today you are the biggest religion on the planet Earth. Is it necessary for you to convert? It's not necessary to convert. You already achieved in this 2,000 years, conversion, do you understand? Yes. Today, if a Hindu wants to become a Christian, just walk into Christianity. Mm. And if a Christian wants to become a Hindu, just walk into Hinduism. Hinduism. You should do it through appetite and choice. There is no reason, there is no other reason to change religion. Yeah. All of you understand? We have to be practical, we have to be logical, we have to be reasonable. If you look, our homeland is India. Look at the mess India is in today. Every news channel, every day, there is hatred between the religions. Look at the channels. Go, go, NDTV, uh, Times Now. All of these channels are spewing hatred. And the journalists themselves are the cause of this hatred. They look for the smallest spark in a dispute between religion and they send it around the world. So my message to you brothers and sisters today. I want you to understand religion from a scientific perspective, not from a mystical perspective. God is not a mystic. God is the supreme scientist. God created the chemicals. God created plants. God created everything you see on this earth is a creation of God. So who is the supreme scientist? God. God is not some mystery worker somewhere in the sky. You can find him through the ashram, you can find him through the church, you can find him through the mosque. God is not here to be hidden. God is here to be discovered. The pastor can send you on a route to discover the Lord because he has discovered God himself. The guru can take you to God because the guru has discovered God. The Molana can take you to God because the Molana has discovered 
God. We only use the word miracle in baby stages. God is the absolute. He cannot be a miracle and the absolute at the same time. Alright? So I want to conclude with a connection between Lord Jesus Christ and Sanatan Dharma. If you read in your Bible, you will see the wise men from the East. They do not say three wise men from the East. It says wise men from the East, but we assume it's three because there were three gifts. In Sanskrit, the name Yesu, Y-E-S-U, means pay obeisance to. Three wise men or wise men from the East, the name in Sanskrit, Sanskrit is the first language that existed on this earth. Imagine the name Yesu exists in the first language that existed. And that language was created 155 trillion years ago. Don't look at Lord Jesus 2022 years. Don't look at Lord Jesus for a small fragment of 2022 years. His name existed since creation. Give a round of applause to that knowledge that we are looking It is our duty to uplift each other. Let's do not look at the differences. So initially today, Pastor stated that the menu today would be vegetarian in respect of the Guru and in respect of the Ashram. Pastor, I see all town calling places. <laughs> but I gave an instruction that only I and my devotees are vegetarians. We will sit next to you and eat your meat. You will eat your meat, we will eat our vegetable all together. And I'm breaking an ashram protocol because my love for you is greater than the technicality So we have to give and take. If we want to love in any loving relationship, there has to be give and take. The problem with religion today is that we are looking at our differences and we are saying how superior we are. That is religious intolerance today. We started in a very small church and a very small ashram. But one day, Pastor, this consciousness will permeate every atom in, on this planet. Amen. This consciousness. And I stated two weeks ago that when you belong to any part of the world and you look at South Africa, what comes to mind? Lions walking in the street. Lions, tigers, elephants. Yes? So I want some of my people in India that I was not born in ashram in India. I'm born on the wild continent. Amen. I am a lion guru. <laughs> and if, if there are extremists on my side, extremists on my side, and I see them popping up already, then what do lions do? Eat them I will eat them up. I am from South Africa. No nonsense. Nobody is going to deter this oneness program. If I want to be at pastor's service every Sunday, I will be. And if pastor wants to be in my ashram every Sunday, he will be there. There is not going to be any obstacle on our way. Yes. That's right. Okay? Amen. Then lastly, I want to bring into perspective Karo Charo. Amen. 
Because if you read, uh, asked him when I met him, is that a new jacket? He's got a name on his jacket and I want to fix all that it's before he comes in. I want to fix it. The Guru is a greater comedian. I told him on the first day he attended Ashram. Alright? So Karo Charo and I are on a guru-disciple relationship. We dream it as a reality show. I have my people on Facebook Live and he has his people on social media and we want the people to see how a guru and a disciple come together. So I chose the hardest disciple on earth. I chose the hardest disciple on earth to show how this system can change. So I'm allowing him all right. His language is not Sanskrit. It's F and B. All right. And his name is also derived from F and B. But he'll qualify it. He'll say he wrote to the Hindu Mahasabha and the name to the M. Uh, uh, no way it's found to be uh, obscene in the scriptures. But just his justification. We know that name. Yeah. Especially Indians in South yeah. Africa. No, I heard that name in, uh, in the ashram in India as well. I don't know if Mother, Mataji remembers. I heard that name in India. So, besides his dressing and his dressy language, there is a beautiful soul inside. So, I have found that soul before the soul found me. I found him before he found me, I brought him through and he is a true humanitarian Amen. Right. and I'm looking at his humanitarian aspect of KC. So his name is Sagrin but he sent me a message on messenger or oh, WhatsApp I don't know, please use KC. <laughs> but I'll go back to Sagrin. Because the Guru's disciple is Sagar. Right? So Sagar is going to come and say a few words. And I am pushing him. We are involved in changing the politic dynamics of this country. I started this two years ago. A pastor was there when I started this initiative. So we want people that go into government to represent us. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Sriman Narayan will not come into our parliament and enact laws so that we can benefit. We have to elect the right people into parliament so that we can benefit. God don't want to become the president of the country. He got enough work being the president of the universe. Alright? So based on that, Together with your church, we are going to motivate the right people in politics. Our slogan now is, out ANC. We don't want ANC anymore. Alright? But we are going to school you as we move along. And I wanted to give you this background so you don't accept Karo Charo today here as a comedian. Alright? He's wearing his comedian clothes, but he's going to come and talk to you as a humanitarian, as a social worker, and a would-be politician. We still have to polish him up. We have to polish him up to make him into a politician. Let's hope he can fulfill Mr. Raj Bansi's place to represent Indians, to represent the minority. But it is up to you and I to shake him up. All right, we can catch him outside and make him take his jacket out. Thank you very much, uh, Karo Charo.
pasta caro charo. <laughs> Right, uh, we switch it on. It's on. <clears throat> okay. Two. Right. Good, on. Good morning, everyone. I wasn't aware that I'd be coming so soon onto this public uh, to chat, but uh, thank you for that. <clears throat> Guruji, when I say my name, Sagan is a part of the name. My official name is Tala Sagan. My <laughs> father's name is Rupanathan, which I carry. <laughs> In my, and, I, and coincidentally, I, I uh, did a video about my father this morning mm. after so many years because I lost my dad when I was seven years old. Right. And the reason I did that video is that I lost my dad when I was seven years old and I grew up without a father, mm. which means I had no father figure, which means I had no fatherly love, mm. which means I had no fatherly guidance, which means I had no fatherly even discipline. I did that video and Guru bear with me because there's a way messages go out and I said even though I didn't have those influences, I still became a martyr. <laughs> okay, and sometimes I'm going to say why I use these terms in my own platform and what I do. I was trying to say that while many people use the excuse of not having a father, which is why they became delinquents, I also didn't have a father. In fact, I had a stepfather. And the stepfather did more harm to me than good to me. But still, I rose above that situation. I don't mind saying sharing that with you. While I didn't have the love, I actually had anti-love. But I still rose above that. I was a top three student in my entire schooling career. I was a head prefect. I went to university. I was captain of school team. I was whatever. I received a book prize in almost every subject in my school. <clears throat> so the lesson there is that you don't necessarily have... I don't know whether he's guiding me from above. I can't tell you that. But I can see you can rise above your situation. And I think that comes from inside me because nobody was there to tell me that. I don't know where it came from, this desire to succeed, or this desire to go above. So, but anyway, I did it. So that was my little short tribute to my dad today. I'll just touch on what Guru said in terms of where I am and what my name is and whatever. And just to tell you something that will lead into something else, I want to talk about why I have this platform, which I never thought I would have. You see, sometimes you people sit here and say you, whichever organization, and you can say whatever you want that's good in the world. You see that guy outside there, he can't hear you. Mm. You don't reach him, mm. but I can reach him. Yes. You see, when I started off this whole thing of my career as to where I would be, there was a deliberate reason why I used the F's and the B's words. It's because when you start a business, if everybody is doing a certain business and you want to be in the same business, how do you make yourself different from the other businesses that you get people to support you? So I deliberately used the tactic. Ten years later, I'm one of the most influential people in this country. When I talk, people listen. That is why even the message of Guru is going to go through my platform that I built based on those concepts. That I now have a platform that you can't reach and you can't reach and you can't reach. But what we do together here, as we live stream on five different platforms, we are reaching those people that you reach and you reach and you reach. So there was a purpose as to why I use the strategy, why, where I am now, why I want to reach people. Because the people who won't come into your church are now listening on a live stream. The people who didn't hear your message are now listening to you through the live stream. So there was a method to the madness in terms of what I was doing and where I am. But obviously there's a passage of time, of where you will come and where you will be. <clears throat> right now, while I'm here, I want to speak when the interfaith thing is wonderful because I've been sort of preaching this for years, I want to say preaching, fighting the system, having arguments. And on many times on my platform, I was called anti-Christ. I was called an anti-Christian. Only because I called out the BS that I saw. I called out the bigots. That I called them out for what they were doing. And many times they were persecuting me because they were calling me out without understanding who I am or what I am. Thinking I am holier than you, I am better than you. And that's the message I want to change. And that's something I want to be able to tell you guys, especially of the Christian faith, um, <clears throat> that throughout my life I've been fighting the system because there are people within you and your other people who do things that turn me against you. You know, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi said, 
Christianity would be a wonderful thing if it weren't for the Christians. Yeah, true. There's a reason he said that. Yeah. And I have experienced that. And sometimes I want you guys to understand, you know, I was having an argument with a guy on Facebook. It was a Christian post that I was on about. But I was right. If you remember the Simeon Bradley Chetty scenario where he came out and attacked Hindus. I went against him. I called him out for what he was. And then suddenly the Christians were sensitive that I was overtly picking out that it was indeed wrong. <clears throat> and as the guy came on, he was having, I took him onto, onto another platform and I was having a conversation with him. And finally I gave him my number to call me. We had a conversation within half an hour. He had a light bulb went off in his head and he said, ah, I didn't see it that way. I said, let me tell you something, how we are persecuted as Hindus throughout my lifestyle. I'll give you my own personal example. Throughout my 12 years of schooling, every morning in assembly, our Father, our name, and I will be that name, thy kingdom come, thy will be that name, that it is them. Give us this day our daily prayer. 80% of people in the audience are Hindus. But you hear a Christian prayer. Do you know when I went home and my mother was doing prayers, I thought she was stupid. I thought she was backwards. Because the world was telling me, according to the world, which we see on news, Christianity was the way to go. I found myself questioning my own parents as to what they were doing. This is called indoctrination. You know, I said to you, when you go to, and many of you have seen this, and probably if you do it, let's try and change it. The reason I'm saying this is not to attack. The reason I'm saying is, see, in order to understand what goes on in a neighbor's house, you must be able to walk into his house. That's what Guru is doing here. Walk into his house to understand where he comes from, what he is experiencing, how he does things, and the logic behind it. So I say to this guy, you know, <clears throat> you'll go to your, for a family function, it's your Hindu brothers, you'll walk into the house, or whatever it is you stand, and you'll say to them before dinner, can we all just hold hands and pray? Our Father, you give up. There's a picture of Sai Baba on the wall. Or whatever, Guru, whatever feet. The fact that that person decided that he would take it upon himself to impose his faith on people who have another faith. Two, yeah, I'll be back. The fact that he had this audacity to impose his faith. In fact, I would call it disrespectful. Disrespectful. And when I told him that, he went quiet because he, he said to me after that, Do you know something? I do this. Listen, I'm going to take you to the congregation. A little bit more mind for a proper baptism of my. <laughs> 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 so we expect double time offering. <laughs> That's true. That's because we're coming. So I hope you. There's one small example. I'm going to resonate to you. That you that you understand that when you come into my house and you do. I'll give you another example. I was sitting at my son. His school. He was previously white school and mixed parents there, whatever, and, and, and the teacher, before she, you know, they give you a general outline of what's going to happen, and she said, before we start, Brother Michael will lead us in prayer. And as he started the prayer, my wife put her hand on my leg and she said, sit, sit down. <laughs> because I was, tell me if I'm wrong to have an objection. Let's turn the scenario. Mrs. Naidu is the teacher, and she's a side devotee. And she said, let's begin with the heart. Mm. And she wants to blow and she wants to. How many would it be? You see, only when you see it from that angle, you understand where we're coming from. He was in a school mm. and he was told to sing songs, mm. which was against the system. You're not, you're not supposed to impose your religion, but they did it. Mm. You see, Christianity as a whole has this belief, as Guru was saying, to convert, to be able to tell you, I am greater than you. And I'm here today, I'm using this platform, I hope I'm not exceeding my stuff, but it's through knowledge that we learn. It's through my personal experience I'm teaching and I'm glad I have this platform to tell you this is where I come from. This is what I have experienced. This is what has turned me into a rebel in many ways. By the way, I'll share something which you might be shocked. My entire family are Christians. My brother is a pastor. When he used to go to youth, I used to take them to youth in my combi. Drop them off and pick them up. 
my association with Christianity go back 30, 30 years. Right. From the Alan Joseph to the pastor, there was sort of, there was, uh, Pele Akinaba strongly called me Papa, we used to be have a conversation. And the reason is, he has a respect for me, of what I stand for and where I come from. That's right. And where we are. <clears throat> so if we to go forward as a people, like I said to you, they go to youth, and he said they come to youth. I would say to him, you know what you're doing? You're not preaching to the converted. I said, you know what's better? Go out, have interfaith, which I was saying then. Play volleyball, have sports with other people. So that they can learn from you without you teaching them on the board. They will learn your ways through association. If you associate with people of a certain caliber, your characteristics automatically will be imposed on them. Without you telling them, see, do this, do that. It's by association. So, uh, I hope I haven't ruffled any feathers, but that's what I do. Yes. It's sometimes nice to speak the uncomfortable truths, yes. so that we go forward as a people. Yes. And this is why maybe Guru and I have uh, attached on that level, because as he said, he's a radical, and uh, he picked the hardest which means I'm a radical. We're going to cross swords a bit, because our understanding may be still there, but we'll reach a ground where we have a common vision of going forward. Having said that, it's a wonderful day to be a, a father. Amen, yeah. My son is telling you, hope he appreciates me for what I am. I didn't my, my, my I'm glad I out with my father, my father, father dad age of 41. Yeah. And so he is uh, here to know that and, and if you have a parent and you have your father still living, uh, you know, to just uh, appreciate them That's what right. they are. Mm. Even if you're not talking to your father, maybe go and visit him today. <laughs> And mothers as well, I must say this when it comes to fathers or mothers, I must address this. They are toxic fathers and they are toxic mothers. Yes. They does not sugarcoat it. Yeah. Yeah. There are parents who are mothers who are toxic who will choose a child over the other child. Yes. As much as you, the best child in the family, you can feed them whatever, they choose the young one. Yeah. There's a problem in the family. Right. But, am I right? It's an, un, it's an uncomfortable truth. Yeah. Yeah. With fathers, it's the same thing. They will choose a child in the family. Yeah. No matter what you do for them, they will choose that child. But as a, as a child, even, even, even me, I don't want to share too much, but even I just, I would just love my mother for, for it, flexing my mother. Whatever she did, it did a lot. Right. You just continue to love your parents, That's you continue to show your love. Yeah. You can't be, you can't change, you need to be who you are. Yeah. If you show love, show your love. It doesn't matter what the parent is, it's an important thing to listen. And, and also, before I close, I want to say this as a, as a message to fathers today. My message also goes out to single dads who play the role of mothers. Yes. Mm. And who never committed to any other relationship but to their children through yes. all their Sacrifice their lives by yeah. the way, mm. which mothers do. Yeah. But fathers don't often get the recognition. Yeah. And the other point I want to make is of fathers who are in estranged relationships mm. where they are denied access to their children. Yeah. Toxic mothers and toxic partners <coughs> use their children as scapegoats, as, as pawns. Yes. Yeah. And I know fathers who are pining for their children today and cannot be with their children today. Yes. Because of toxic partners who keep them away from their children. Yes. Fathers' rights are, no, are not as big as mothers' rights. Mm. So it's important that we that have had this platform to address it. And uh, I don't know before we close, whatever. I also can sing one to songs. Yeah. So, yes. Pastor, I'll pray before we close. Yes. I, want to, I, want to, I want to thank you for this platform. I never thought I'd be on, on a platform like this, but as Guru has said, maybe there are, uh, is more to come. We, as uh, he touched on something in terms of where he wants to speak to be, yeah. and I believe I'll be missing my duty if I say that we, are specific, specifically an Indian community, a minority in this country, yeah. are being persecuted. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. And uh, he mentioned, and I ask people always this, you know, people on my platform, when I talk about politics, they call me a clown. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, if I'm a clown, I'm leading you. What does that say about you? <laughs> well, why don't you lead and I'll follow you? And if I ask people, in our last 160 years, name me three, well, two leaders. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Shandar Pansi's name will come up. Yes. After that, that Nothing. <laughs> so where are our leaders? Yes. Where are the people? Yes. So I've been using my platform over the years to be able to speak 
about uh, minority rights, more especially Indian rights. I don't have a problem saying I will champion the rights. Yes. I will use the word of Julius Malema and say I will not apologize for championing the rights of a minority, especially Indian people. Yes. And let me also make this clear. Championing the rights of a minority like Indian people doesn't make me a racist. Mm -hmm. Lobby groups exist around the country. Whether you lobby for Islam, whether you lobby for Christianity, doesn't make you anti anything else. It yes. means you're lobbying for your own specific needs, yes. purposes, values, what you stand for. That's what it's there for. So, Guru has a trajectory. He told me that. I didn't know I'm going to be there. Apparently, he's saying that. So, we are on that course of trying to understand. He's trying to hone me into being uh, a leader in that sense. I've never seen myself as a leader in that capacity. But if everyone else doesn't want to step up, I'm prepared to step up. Amen. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope I didn't go beyond the, the scope of what is to be there. But I'm, uh, I'm an entertainer. If you give me a mic and give me a stage, I'm going. Thank you. Jai Shri Narayan. Song. Song. Now. Now. Where's the band? But I need backup. I don't, I don't know the song entirely. I, I'm, I'm, I got a song from back in the day. Okay. Ron Canoli's Ancient of Days. <laughs> Where's the bed? I don't know, someone's gonna back me up, right? So, can I have some? Is there some watches? Can I have some?